Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Evan Phillips, and in today's video, I'm going to show you some advanced podcast editing tricks that I've been using for a new project I'm working on in Reaper. Let's dive in. Welcome to Podpeak, where I talk about recording, editing, and sound design for music production, podcasts, and film. If you're new to the channel, make sure and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you get updates every time I put out a new video. Okay, have you ever seen the film Free Solo? It's about a guy named Alex Honnold, who's arguably the most famous rock climber on the planet. The film follows Alex as he becomes the first person to ever solo the nose on El Capitan in Yosemite. And by that, I mean he climbed a 3,000-foot granite cliff without a rope. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyways, I recently started working with a production team that produces a show that Alex co-hosts called Climbing Gold. It's a podcast that tells deep-dive stories about the history of climbing, as well as topics ranging from triumph, loss, and of course, risk. Suffice to say, it's a really interesting show, and if you're into the outdoors or climbing, or just like a good storytelling show, you should definitely check it out. So, one of the reasons why I get hired to work on shows like this is that I have a ton of experience in pretty much every aspect of podcast production. For example, I know how to work with transcripts and collaborate with teams to do pre-production. I'm pretty good at writing stories and scripts, I'm a fast and efficient audio editor, and I know how to create original music and sound design. So when someone hires me, they're basically getting an all-in-one package, which lets us work faster, cheaper, without compromising quality. Honestly, it's a dream job. I love the work I do, but like most things in life, there's a catch. But there's a catch. One of the problems with being a jack-of-all-trades working on a big project like this is that it's mentally exhausting. For example, before I get into any audio editing, I have to transcribe and listen to hours of audio, make notes, collaborate and work with a team, and start constructing a story outline. So by the time I actually get into the audio editing part of the job, I'm already feeling pretty mentally taxed. That's why it's really important for me to have my editing workflow streamlined, concise, and locked in. That way, the less time I can spend looking at a computer screen, the more time I can focus working on the creative part of the job, which is really what I enjoy. So that's where some advanced editing tips can really come into play. Let's take a look at the current project I'm working on. What you're seeing here is a raw interview. It's about two hours long, and it consists of three people speaking on three separate tracks. The interview has been transcribed, and I've been working with the team the last few weeks to start building out the story, which looks like this on a Google Doc. All these sections are time-coded and need to be pulled from the interview to start building out the episode. But before I start pulling timestamp chunks of audio from the script, I need to create comp tracks for each of the speakers in my Reaper session. Now there's a bunch of ways you can do this, but let me demonstrate what this might look like without using my new shortcuts. First, you select the tracks, right click, and choose duplicate. This duplicates each track, all their items, in order. Next, I'll drag these down to the bottom. Then I'll delete all the items. Next, I need to rename each comp track by adding the word comp after each person's name. Finally, I'll create a folder to put the comp tracks in and name it comps. As you can see, that's a lot of steps. So let me show you the custom action that I've created specifically for this project to make these steps go a lot faster. With the tracks selected, I initiate my custom action. You can see that it duplicated the tracks, moved them to the bottom, and deleted the items. Also, there's automatic prompts to rename each track. Once I've renamed the tracks, there's an automatic prompt to create and name a folder. And boom. All that happened without any mouse clicks. And here's a close-up of how I constructed this custom action. Now that I have my comp track set up, let's start pulling audio timestamps from the script. What I'm going to do is go through the script. 
identify timestamp sections that correspond to the audio interview, and start adding those sections to my comp track. Once I have all these pieces in place, they'll be moved left in order to the start of the project. Then I can export this initial edit to a new session to start the next phase of production. Let's demonstrate how you might do this without a custom action set up. You could select the section you want to pull and drag it down to the comp track. This is fine, but in a large project, you'll inevitably start making mistakes, especially when moving multiple items at once. Then once you have all your items on the comp tracks, you'll need to manually move them over to prepare for the export. But with the custom shortcut I've created, you can solve all these issues with one keystroke. Let's say I want to pull a section from the top track. Just select the item and make a time selection, hit the keyboard shortcut, and boom. The item is moved down to its corresponding comp track and moved left toward the project start. Each edit I make after that will continue to line up to the right of the preceding item. I can also select two items from two different tracks and it will move them to the corresponding comp tracks. I can even select items from oddly spaced tracks, and that will work as well. And here's a close up of how I constructed this custom action. Now, you might be watching this video and say to yourself, these keyboard shortcuts and custom actions aren't really gonna save that much time, but any experienced podcast producer or music producer who manages big projects knows what a game changer this kind of stuff really is. Remember that in audio work, time is money. If you can save time doing medial tasks like this, you are gonna save money, you're gonna work faster, the clients you work for are gonna be happier. And remember, it's not just about saving time, it's also about saving mental energy. Energy that can be used for creative work, rather than tedious audio editing. So that's it for today's video. As this project progresses, I might share more advanced tips as I'm creating them and using them in my day-to-day -day workflow. Until then, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure and turn on notifications so you get updates every time I put out a new video. All right, well, that's it for today. Take care of yourselves. Peace out. We'll catch you next time.